Therefore, there's transport, there is communication, there is warehousing. When talk of warehousing, I'm referring to that process of keeping goods until their appropriate time or until they are needed is what we refer to as warehousing. Then we need banking. Remember I've said banking is a process, the process of keeping money, uh, borrowing money in the bank, withdrawing deposit, it is accepting deposit, sorry, withdrawing money is generally what we call banking. That process of keeping, borrowing, and withdrawing is basically what is uh, banking. So therefore, when you talk of commerce, the study of trade and aids to trade, and are given aids to trade refers to the services that facilitate trade to take place. Uh, then we have the other discipline, which we call economics. And economics here, we are talking about uh, the study of how human beings strive to satisfy their address want using the scarce resources available. So therefore, economics still is part of the discipline that is taught in business studies. It tends to look at how human beings strive to satisfy their address want using the scarce resources available. Then you had the other discipline, which is entrepreneurship. Just as it has been defined up there, actually this, is, this was a, if you had done the first question, it was very easy for you to score in the second one, because it was just a matter of referring to the above in question number one. So entrepreneurship as a process of acquiring the necessary resources in order to start and learn a business. Then we have the office practice. When we talk of the office practice, we look at the study of the activities that are carried in, uh, activities that are carried in the office. Remember, if you go to any particular office, you realize that there are a number of activities that are carried out there. For example, we have mailing. Mailing here, we are referring to sending and receiving of letters. We have a uh, reproduction of documents you realize that there is printing, photocopying, duplication of document, ETC. Then you realize that we have other functions like communication, which is part of the office. So therefore, office practice, we are looking at the activities that take place <clears throat> in an office. Remember office is a topic number uh, six in form one, which will tackle in the course of time. Then I would want us to go to question number three. You all agree with me in question number one and two. It was very easy for you to score without too much struggle. Then question number three, lessons for studying business studies. Lessons for studying business studies. Why are you here in this class? There are four main answers that you should never forget. One, you are here in this class of business because you want to form a foundation for your future courses or future career. Number two, uh, you want to know maybe the role of government in business. And number three, many of us like working. And that is why you are here. And I'm very happy because you have made time to be here. So therefore, the other main lesson why you study business studies, you want to acquire a positive attitude towards work. I know many of us like working. I told you, you are here in Man High School because of hard work. You are a product of hard work. So therefore, business studies makes people to develop a positive attitude towards work. So some of the answers here, we have the following. Learners gain knowledge and skills on how to start and manage a successful business. So don't just write uh, to start a business, but a successful business. Somebody who has been in a class of a business studies should is well positioned to do a better business as compared to another person who have never stepped in a business class. 
The other reason, learners acquire skills and knowledge to understand the relationship, the relationship between the various business activities. We're able to acquire skills and knowledge to understand the relationship between various business activities. Remember in topic number two, we look at the different business activities. For example, you have extraction, you have manufacturing, you have construction, we have buying and selling, provision of services, among other reasons, other activities. And therefore, with the study of business activities, business studies, you are able to acquire uh, that knowledge. Then the other one is it helps one in career choices. Having done business studies, you are able to, to, make, to make wise choices as you uh, pursue your career, uh, if it is related to business studies. Then the other one is that learners are able to acquire basic knowledge and skills, attitude to understand changing global trends in business. Uh, like nowadays, people are making use of ICT in learning businesses, making use of technology. If you look at the, the current, the emerging trend where people are being told or advised to work from home, so one is able to understand this changing global trend in business, like making use of ICT. Then the other one is that learners appreciate the role of market forces. When you talk of the market forces, we are referring to demand and supply. Here, remember, uh, we have different ways of determining prices of a product. And one of it is forces of demand and supply, what you call market forces. And by this, what you mean, there are times when if there is high demand of a certain product in the market, and there is a, and that product in the market, there is limited supply. What, me, what it means is that that product will be highly demanded. And therefore, the price of that product will go up. That is what you are calling the market forces. The other one is to appreciate the role of business in the society. And I remember I keep asking questions. What do you think would be happening if there were no businesses? Where you go to town, you wanted to buy a pair of shoes, then there is nobody who is selling that pair of shoes. You wanted to buy a phone, you wanted to buy a book, there's no one to provide that book. There's no shop that is selling uh, that commodity that you're looking for. So therefore, anytime you go to the market and you realize that the product which you're looking for are available in the market, you appreciate the role of uh, business in the society. Then the other one, uh, the knowledge that you acquire is applied in another field of study, such as uh, uh, geography, arts, and even home science. Of course, any other correct answer, any other correct answer was accepted. So therefore, it is important to keep revising business studies. I say business study is a, a subject of champions, and all of you are champions. We also say it is a living subject. You realize that most of the items that will be covered in this, in this subject are things that happens, things that involves allowed. So therefore, it is very easy. Uh, the other question was question number four. Why business exists? I would want you to ask yourself, assuming today you wanted to start a business, what are some of the reasons that can make you to start that particular business? Many of us would want to become their own bosses. We like our own self-independence. We don't want to be controlled. When you want to, to start, when you want to, uh, to extend your sleep, when I extend, because you are your own boss. So one of the reasons people would want to become their own boss. The main reason why many of us start businesses is because they want to make what? Profit. They want to make profit. The other reason 
is to provide essential goods and services such as health care services and even education. The other reason is to create employment. There are many people who normally look aloud and see what is that which that they can do to the community. What can they do to improve the livelihood of people? And then they will realize that the best way to approach that is to come up with a business where you will create job opportunities. So therefore, there are people who start businesses because they want to create employment opportunities. And then others will start a business to create market for locally available low materials. So somebody will look aloud and spot a market gap or what we call a business opportunity. And therefore, you come up with a business so that you can make use of the locally available low materials. The other reason is to create healthy environment by making use of the waste materials. So some of the materials that would have been a waste, uh, you make use of them. For example, we have the scrap metals. Although nowadays scrap metals are rarely found, people have realized that they can be very useful. Even nowadays plastic, the hard plastic is normally uh, highly demanded by people who normally make use of uh, plastic. Uh, people are making now plastic pipes, which are replacing the wooden pipes. These are people who have spotted a business opportunity and they are making use of them. The other one is to produce and sell new products. So from the new innovations, e.g. think of that person who, who was able to come up with a, a wireless phone. The person who invented that wireless phone. Nowadays we have people who are using, or nowadays we have a number of devices. For example, the Bluetooth devices. These are people who are inventing them. That you don't have to use the one which is uh, wired. <clears throat> you can use the one which is wireless. And they are making a lot of uh, uh, money out of that because they want to move with the technology. So therefore, the other reason, they want to be their own bosses. That one I had mentioned. The other reason is to utilize extra time at their disposal. And in the process, they earn extra money. Right now, when people are complaining about <clears throat> this corona pandemic, there are many people who are making use of this period. So they are benefiting out of this period because they have started their businesses. They are utilizing the extra time that they are having to make use of the resources which they have. So therefore they are utilizing their extra time to make uh, income out of that. And then others are utilizing their, so we have two points, utilizing your extra resources, and the other one, utilizing your uh, time, leisure time. Then question number five. Question number five, categories of business activities. You can see how we have given you very flexible and very easy questions, because we never wanted you to, to struggle so much at home. We wanted to give you questions that you could uh, be easily scored. Question number five, categories of business activities. The categories, we had just told you to name them. We never wanted explanation, just naming. And some of the categories include the following. We have the trade, which includes buying and selling of goods with the name of making profit. So when you're answering, just talk of uh, buying and selling of goods, which is okay, you score. Uh, there are two terms here I would want us to differentiate. One of them is processing, and the other one is manufacturing. Processing and manufacturing. There's a difference, although some of us tend to confuse. There's what you call processing. Processing involves combination of different a combination, conversion, sorry, it involves conversion of raw materials into a finished product. 
conversion of a raw materials into a finished product. By this, what we mean, if you are given, for example, uh, sugar cane, you convert it into sugar. Remember, you have not added any other raw material, but what you have done is, you have just done the conversion. You have just converted uh, raw materials into a finished product. Conversion of raw materials into a finished product without including other raw materials. Then we have manufacturing. Maybe other examples of processing before we go to manufacturing. We may have uh, processing of maize flour or others who talk of grinding, grinding of maize flour, maize grains into maize flour. We can also have other examples of iron, conversion of irons, not uh, that process of heating irons into iron steel, and many other examples. Then we have manufacturing. Manufacturing now, it involves combination of different raw materials to come up with a finished product. And that is the main difference between manufacturing and processing. Processing, I have said, you just convert a raw material into a finished product. Manufacturing, it involves now combination of different raw materials into a final product. And a good example, if somebody was to give you making tea is manufacturing. Why do you think making tea is manufacturing? Simply because we are combining different raw materials and we need to ask ourselves, what are the raw materials of making tea? One of them will include what? Sugar. The other one will include tea leaves or coffee. The other one will include milk and water. So when you combine them and then you heat them at a certain temperature, after boiling, you will have your tea. <clears throat> so that is combination of different raw materials to come up with a final product. When you think of bread baking, you are, con you are combining different raw materials. For example, we have, uh, you have wheat or wheat flour, then you may have industrial sugar, you may have yeast, and maybe some other preservative which are used, and thereby you come up, you have your bread after it has undergone, undergone the process. So that one is a good example of manufacturing and any other process where we have a combination of different materials to come up with a final product. Then the other one, number four, is extraction. Extraction, we are talking about uh, that process of obtaining goods from their natural setting. Of the process of obtaining goods from their natural setting. And a good example is farming, labeling, mining. In mining here, we may talk about quarrying, uh, uh, fishing, among others. That process of obtaining goods from their natural setting is what you are calling extraction. Why are we talking of farming? Anytime you are harvesting, let's say cabbages, you extract them from their natural setting. Anytime you are cutting down a tree to make tiba, that rubbering, you are getting the tree from its natural setting. And even hunting, hunting is part of extraction. Hunting, because you are hunting the animal from its natural habitat or setting. Then we have the other one, which we call provision of services. Remember, at the beginning, we talked about services as actions, human actions, which can be sold. Human actions, which can be sold. And when we talk of the human actions, which can be sold, we are talking about mental and physical. Human actions, which are either mental or physical, which can be sold. And a good example here we have teaching, hairstyling, shoe shining, nursing, 
uh, banking, uh, counseling, all those services. So therefore, those are just examples of services. So all those services that you give, all those services that you give, all those services that I'm talking about here, they are used, you provide them at a fee. Then you have construction. You may have construction of buildings, bridges, uh, construction of roads, among others. So there are those who engage in construction as a business activity. Then we have distribution. There are many of us who normally confuse between distribution and transport. There's a difference. When you talk of transport, we talk of movement of people or goods from one point to another. Just movement. When you talk of transport, just movement of people or goods from one point to another. But when it comes to distribution, it must have two key words. One of them, the, uh, from the point of production to the point of consumption. Point of production to the point of consumption. So when you are defining distribution, those two key words must come out production and distribution. So, uh, so distribution now by definition, we say it refers to the movement of goods from the point of production to the point of consumption. Then you go to question number six, external business environment. Remember when you look at the business environment, maybe by definition, we normally say that business environment refers to factors or conditions, and even at times we talk of factors, conditions, or situations that affect the operation of a business, either from within or from outside, from within or from outside. And these factors, those that are affecting the business from within. In other words, we call them internal or micro. Internal environment or micro environment. Those that affect the operation from outside, we call them external or macro environment. When you talk of the internal environment here, we are talking of those factors that the businessman can control. They are within his control. He can control them. And these are some of, the, some of the examples we may have uh, management policies and style. He is the one, he can be able to determine some of the policies that need to be made. When it comes to the resources, he is the one who determines how the, the, the resources available will be allocated in the business. So, we may also have the employees. He is the one to determine at the time of hiring employees or when recruiting. He is the one to determine whether he needs skilled employees or maybe unskilled employees, depending on the work to be done. Uh, remember, I'm still looking at the internal. I've not gone to the question. Uh, the other one may be the business culture the business culture within the business. And when we talk of the culture, we talk about the way of life. There are some business that promote hard work. They have a culture of hard work, whereby as soon as you get employed, you automatically know that a lot is expected from you. Uh, among many others, we have even the owners, ETC. Then going back to our question, external business environment. When you talk of the natural environment, natural and physical, we normally look at them the same way because these are the factors that affect the operation of a business from outside. Natural environment, talking about the climate, the topography of the land, among other factors, so the natural factors. 
Then we have the demographic. When you talk of the demographic factor here, we are looking at the population. Remember, uh, one of the main lessons that determine the success of a business is the market. So if you have located your business in a place where we have low population, it means you have a limited market. At the same time, when it comes to labor, the employees, if the employees, if the population allowed is not uh, enough to give you enough employees, it will, the business will be affected. Then we have the technological environment. Here, we are talking about the skill that is being used in production, the skill that is being applied in production. Then we have the competitive environment. And before maybe I go to the competitive, when it comes to technology, uh, remember, if a business is adopting a high level of technology, what is likely to happen is that the business will do better. If you use the current modern technology in production, you are likely to produce better quality goods. And secondly, you are likely to reduce the, the cost. Then production is likely to, to, to be continuous production. You are likely not to experience delays or shortage of goods into the market since you're using the current uh, technology. Then we have the, we go now to the competitive environment. Here, we are looking at the level of competition in the market. A business that is operating in a place where there is a favorable competition, the business will do better. Favorable competition. What about stiff competition? When there is stiff competition, the business is likely to be outdone the market because of the high level of competition in the market. Although we normally say competition is healthy because it enables a business to keep up with the, with the other businesses in the market to provide the better quality services, better products in the market. So when there is favorable competition, it is healthy. But if there is unfair competition, where some competitors maybe might be using unfair means to achieve a business objective, at that time we say competition is not favorable. So competition is part of a business environment. And when you talk of competition, we normally classify it into two. There is what we call generic competition. Link of that competition between products that serve the same purpose or competition between two businesses that are serving the same purpose, although they are different. For example, we normally give an example of a, a cinemas and discos. When people go for a cinema, or what we currently call them movies, somebody has gone for a, for a movie out, out there, the main reason for going there is entertainment. Another person, will get entertained by going in a place where there is loud music. Just go and listen to the music, maybe dance, etc. Those two people are getting entertained. The key word here, they are being entertained, although the entertainment is being done differently. So that is generic competition. Competition between products that serve the same purpose, although different. Then we have what we call enterprise competition. This is a kind of competition between businesses that are offering the same product. For example, you can have competition between uh, Macmillan or what you call uh, Molan Publisher and Oxford Publisher. Competition between Samsung and Oppo in selling phones. Maybe competition between even schools, Alliance, Boys High School competing with Man High School. And of course, Man will have to do them. We have no doubt about that. Uh, then we go to social cultural environment. Social cultural environment. Here, we are talking about the community allowed. 
We are talking about the culture of the people. I've said, remember I've said culture is a way of life. So here, as a businessman, you have to consider the culture of the people before starting your business. You have first of all to know what are there some products that the community allowed does not consume and probably you want to start selling them. So you have to weigh some options. For example, if you wanted to succeed, assuming you want to start a kind of a butchery where you want to be dealing with pork meat, if you go and put up that business in a Muslim community, what is likely to happen is that your business will fail because the culture of the people in that region or in that community does not consume what you're selling. The same way, if you go and sell bui bui in a community, let's say they are equal, who don't use that? You are likely also not to succeed. I, somebody was telling me in one southwest sometimes back that the Maasai do not consume fish. I don't know whether it is true uh, or it used to happen sometimes back and nowadays it is a uh, it is not working. Is it? <clears throat> okay. Uh, the other one is the fiscal environment. Here we are looking at the fiscal infrastructure and the effect. Uh, the fiscal infrastructure here, we are talking about the roads, <clears throat> communication network. We are also talking about transport, uh, even water. ETC. If there is a little bit of those fiscal infrastructure, the business will do better. And if they are not, the business will be affected negatively. Then we go to question number seven. Question number seven, which talks about aid to trade. The aid to trade. Remember this, is a, this one had captured it when you are looking about commerce. Remember you said commerce refers to the study of trade and aid to trade. And the aid to trade here, we talked about what? Aid to trade, we talked about services that assist trade to take place. So these are the services that assist trade to take place. We talked about insurance, banking, warehousing, transport, communication, communication, uh, product promotion, uh, ETC. Those are just examples of aid to trade, those services that assist trade to take place. Then we go to question number eight. Question number eight, factors that enhance a healthy business environment. Remember yesterday I saw a program on the television uh, with a heading, we can't breathe. I don't know whether there's any one of you who cannot breathe at this moment. All of us are breathing. Very good. Now, factors that enhance a healthy business environment. One of them is reduced pollution. How do you feel when you go to an environment where there's more trees, there is no pollution, you experience that good uh, fresh air. Number two, use of environmental friendly chemicals that are <clears throat> not harmful to plants, people, and animals. So, the chemicals that you're using, they are friendly to both human and animals. Then the other one is uh, government support through, of course, provision of essential services. When you talk of the essential services, what you are referring to here, you are talking of those services that are very important to the people. For example, the sewerage system. 
think of a place where there is no proper sewerage system, how the environment can be, yeah? Then the other one is using locally available resources to avoid depletion. So you use the resources available in a way that they don't get uh, consumed. If, for example, it is the trees, you ensure that after you cut one tree, you plant how many? Ten, to ensure that they don't get depleted. Then the other one is recycling of waste materials. You make use of them. When people look at maybe scrap metals, plastic waste, there are those who look at them as dust or as a garbage. But there are others, when they look at them, they see them as very useful raw materials. So therefore, you, when you recycle them, you promote a healthy business environment. And then the other one is to avoid false information to the customers. How do you feel when you buy some products? For example, let's say you are buying a quincha juice, either a orange, rafuna, ama, pineapple one. Then you are told this juice is full of pineapples and oranges only. That is the ingredient. But when you find out, you realize that those are just chemicals. And yet you are being told that these are fruits only. So you feel bad. So therefore, uh, if you are making a product and you are managing, or may, maybe you are, you are a manufacturer, you should ensure that you, you disclose all the information pertaining to the product. Then question number nine. Factors that comp comprise of negative internal environment. Many of us here had a problem when we were talking of the negative environment. And the problem was, you just gave out your internal environment without showing whether they are positive or negative. Remember the question is asking of factors that comprise negative internal environment. <clears throat> so the answers must be negative. For example, number one there, misappropriated business resources. There's a difference between misappropriation and misuse. Misappropriation and misuse. When you talk of the misappropriation, is when you use the funds for the wrong purpose. You don't use them for the intended purpose. Then when you misuse them, this is now when you use them for your own use, apart from the intended purpose that was supposed to have been done. Then we have the inadequate finances. Inadequate finances is negative because you don't have enough resources to use in the business. <clears throat> the other one is poor business culture. Remember, you said for a business to succeed, it must have a positive culture. And I would want us to make, not to make use of these words, the word poor. Although it has been used there in the marketing scheme, we should not make use of it. We should not make use of the word poor. And even another word that you should not make use of, although it has been written there, is lack of. You see, the moment you say there is lack of fads, it means there is no fads at all, at all. And when there is no fads at all, at all, <clears throat> it means the business cannot continue. But when you say there is inadequate fads, it means that the fads are there, but uh, they are not enough to carry out the various business activities. Then you have the poor skills, poor skills and methods used in production. Somebody may talk about uh, use of an outdated method of production, which is still okay. There's lack of cooperation and uh, hard work. Lack of cooperation. When there's no cooperation, Remember in a business to succeed, there must be teamwork. Teamwork between the owners and the employees. There must be teamwork. 
So when there is no cooperation, it means the business will not do well. Then we have poor business structure. Remember when we talk of the business structure, we look at the formal arrangement of a business. Formal arrangement of a business. Then we have the point of lack of research and development, <coughs> which is negative. Use of outdated technology in production. Among other factors, which are negative. Then question number 10. I hope you are not tired. Studio. You see your work is just listening. Mine, I'm just seated and I'm talking. At the same time, trying to read in between the line when, as I look at you people. So your work is just to listen, you jot down some So your work is very easy. So we can still continue. I want to see by the show of hands, Kevin. Are you there? I can see you are there. <laughs> David, Jogona, Baruko, Naona Uko Stadenu, which is good. I can see Leroy, Kalaja, 23.2.7. I can see you are there. Idris, Juma. Idris, are you there? Naona Uko Hapo. And many others who are there. I can see your hand, Idris. That is good. Uh, therefore, <laughs> uh, actually, I'll give you a chance to talk. I wanted the first one hour to be de to dedicated to studies. Then the remaining 30 minutes, we shall now start interacting. Is that one in order? Leroy, it is in order. Okay, that is good. We look at question number 10. Question number 10, ways in which business may be responsible to their consumers. How do you think the business can be responsible giving the right information concerning the product that they sell, stabilizing the prices of goods? How do you feel when you're buying products today when you when you find that a certain product today is selling at a hundred chain, then when you go there after one week, it is 130. Then after two weeks, the same product is selling at 150. And then the, the other week, it is selling maybe at 170. So if you don't, you don't like that kind of a scenario to happen. So therefore, the pricing prices is a sign of a business that is responsible to its consumers. <clears throat> the other one is relieving them of the burden of buying from different producers and manufacturers. Relieving them of the, of the burden of buying from different producers and manufacturers. By this, what you mean, you find, I can see a number of participants are listening, four participants are listening their hearts. As soon as it is 3 p.m., I'll give you a chance to, to talk. So let us just bear with me for the remaining five minutes. Then I'll give you that chance to talk. <clears throat> uh, the other point is providing them with the right goods, both quality and quantity. And let us avoid uh, separating these points. There are those who keep separating the points of quantity, quality uh, into so many points. We, should, we need to be avoiding them. Quantity and quant quality, we normally look at them together. Then the other one is providing appropriate advice on goods. When you advise your users on how to use their goods, that one is, uh, you assist them. You, 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 it, is a show of, it is a sign of showing responsibility when you provide appropriate advice on goods. And then giving them discount and waivers appropriately. When you give people, how do you feel when you're given a discount? You buy a product and then you know, this product we are selling at 1,000, but we can sell to you at 850. You feel good. A discount is mainly reduction in price of what one is supposed to pay. That allowance that you are given by when buying 
a product. We still have four minutes to go up to three. Then I give you a chance to ask questions. Four minutes, and then I give you that chance. How can a business assist in controlling pollution? One, recycling the waste materials. Two, controlling or releasing what? Dangerous chemicals into the environment. And so an industry that is uh, releasing a lot of waste to the community around, which is not good, a lot of smoke, gases that are affecting the livelihood within uh, that place. Then the other one is use of environmental friendly chemicals that are not harmful. And then the other one, avoiding depletion of local resources by using them, by using them appropriately. And then the use of use of uh, There's a word here that is not very clear. So I think now I can give you a chance to, to talk a bit. Uh, You can talk now. Excuse me, teacher. Actually, I can hear I can hear some of you. Okay. Yes. Yes. When you say that business, when you say that the business that controls those materials, what? you say that you say that when the the five ways of controlling another person. Yes, I can see. Yes, I can hear you, Bravin. Go ahead, Bravin. Yamwea. Bravin, I have seen you have raised your hand. Pius. Pius. Are you there? Get out. Kevin Kariuki. Yes. Yes, Kevin? I have a question. Yes. Yes, go ahead. When you have talked about age to trade. Yes. Is currency one of them or is it categorized under banking? Come again. Is currency one of the age to trade or is it categorized under under banking? Oh no, no. Okay, thank you for that question. When talk of the mm. currency, currency remember is the money, the, the denominations, the notes and coins. So we cannot classify it as a aims uh aid to trade. Thank you. Uh then we can have Pius, are you there?
It shows that those who are raising their hearts, they are not talking. Let me give you a chance, all of you now. Yes, please ensure you unmute yourself when you're talking. Go, now you can ask a question. I've unmuted all of you. You can now ask. Hello. You can see somebody is using Peter Tamagi's phone. The one who is using Peter Tamagi's phone. You have a question? Uh, yeah, that's a question. Uh, I think we can go back to our. Uh, it is shown that members don't have a question. Uh, we go now to form an equation. Uh, Eugene. Anand. Meti. Anand, where are you? Are you there? Question, go ahead. I can see Eugene. Eugene, go ahead. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, way of that. Avoid using the words poor and lack of. Fidel, Fidel Bob. Come on, is it Fidel? Go ahead. Yes. We have said that the talking about the teacher, talking about the time. One person at a time. One person at a time. I think I have um, an issue with the internet on my side. When I say that the there is a controlling with the well business as true. You can unmute yourself and then you, you, you talk. Sir, you have said that, Sir, you have that the, five, the business helps to control the environment. Is it among the... Yes. the about the waste materials? Is it about the waste material? Go ahead. Mm. I have said you can unmute yourself. You can unmute yourself, then you talk, then you mute yourself. Excuse me, teacher. Go ahead. I have a question. Yeah. When you are talking about how the a business can be responsible to its consumers. Yes. Is it a must that it must be in a positive way? Can they also be responsible in a in a form yeah. like maybe part of the responsible, product? Can be responsible. Huh? Just, yes. yes. Just be positive. Or even poor yes, quality. Thank I you. Think, yeah, yeah. Another person. Those who are raising their hands. Excuse me, sir. Yes. So when you are talking about the negative factors to the internal internal business environment, so you, insi you insisted that you stop using poor and lack of. So which words should we use? Is that Joseph Babu? Yes. Okay, well, 
Are you are you are you group? Yes. Yes. Okay, another person. Excuse me, teacher. Yes, go ahead. Um, in, under which topic is social responsibility found? Now, which topic is social responsibility found in? Social responsibility. Yes. That is a uh, talk of social responsibility. An activity of social responsibility. Those things that the business can do to the community. Yes. Another person? Okay, thank you. In the taking care of the. Yeah. <coughs> Yes. When you have said how, how business can assist the in controlling population pollution. Excuse me, sir. I have not had your question. Please come again. I've, I'm asking when you have said how, how business can assist the, to control pollution. Okay. Yeah, the last point. Okay. The last point here yeah, is how to control how to assist in pollution in business. Where well, you're right, using of ma making <laughs> so, have you what have you read there in the Last statement to the how business how business assist in controlling the pollution. Oh, that, uh, yes. A mark one. Yeah. That's bill. That bill. Or yes. That bill. That talking. That that is. I'm not sure. 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 Excuse me, sir. He's holding a form yes, a time. Uh, he's holding a time utility. He's what? Okay. Holding. Okay. Holding. He's holding. Yeah. Holding is a place no. Holding, yeah, it can be placed at the time, time utility. Holding can be at the time utility because you are keeping something, waiting for the shortage to arise so that you can sell it at a higher price. Another person, raise up your hand so that I can give you the chance. Yes, you can see him in the Okay. Go ahead. Charles. Under the under the age of Just trade. Moses. Yes. Yes. Under the age of trade, is security one of them? No, no, no. Uh, you see the age of age, age of trade, those are the services that facilitate trade to take place. And security may not treat it as a service that facilitates trade to take place. In other words, we are talking about what are those essential services that must be there for trade to take place. And we have communication, people must talk, transport, goods have to be moved, 
warehousing, goods have to be stored until they are needed arises, insurance, in the cost of transporting goods, uh, damages may occur, so you need to be assured of compensation if that happens, among others. Yes, another person? Thank you. Okay. Yes, another person? Who else? Just raise up your hand. Not in the picture, but hapo kwa hiyo option ya raising hands. Hapo kwa Zoom. There are those who are raising their hands in the, in the video. Not in the video, but pale juu. So that I can unmute you. Yes, I can see Eric. Eric Nzuki. To repeat the statement where I said the transport and transport where they damage. Sir, again. I'm telling you to repeat yes. the statement where you have said there about the transport and uh, about the damages in the transport. Sir. Okay, I was explaining on the point of insurance. Yes. Come again. Okay. Or... I'm asking where yes. to repeat the statement about the way they transport, where they carry the goods and services and they pay somewhere they make some damage. I like to repeat the statements. Okay, thank you. I was talking about services, the aid to trade, and I was trying to elaborate on the points of our insurance. You see, insurance is where you cover your goods when they are being transported or when they are being kept so that in case of debt damages, you can be compensated. So that is what I was trying to elaborate. In the cost of transporting goods, some may get damaged. If you had insured them with an insurance company, you will get compensation. Yes, another person. Uh, third B. Third, where are you? Third B. Stephen Mulevi, do you have a question? No, you don't. Uh, who else has a question? Chai number nine. Chai number nine. Go ahead. In number nine, uh, when, it say, uh, when it said, when it said, state four factors that comprise a negative internal environment of a business venture, would you say lack of technological advancements to speed up production? But would I say that lack of advancement to speed? Up. Yes. To speed speed up production. Production. Yes. Yeah, it is okay. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, another person. Okay, welcome. Eugene. Eugene. Where is Eugene? Uh, okay. Uh, I wanted to ask whether suppliers are part of external environment business environment? Okay, that is a good question. When you look at the external environment, we have remote environment and operating environment. Under yes. the remote environment, we have the suppliers, customers, and marketing channels or marketing intermediaries. So suppliers are a part of external, which is operating factor. So you are correct. Another person? Hmm? Any other person? Just raise up your hand in the participant so that we can see you. Another person with a question? Uh, 
No, I'm not going to do Any other person with a question? We have allowed 10 minutes for a lesson to end. Uh, anyone who might be having a question, clarification? Excuse uh, me, Victor. Yes, go ahead. What have you said about remote and operational? Are they divisions of external business environment? I think, pardon? Uh, you Pardon? have talked about remote. You have talked about something to do with the remote and the operational. Operating, yeah. Are they are they divisions of external business environment? Yes, they are part of external environment. You say external environment is broad, so it is further okay. classified into operating and remote. Yes. So we replace the natural, the demographic. How do we categorize them in terms of remote and operational? Okay, that is a question. When you are looking at the external environment, uh, yes. operating factors are the factors that the business have some level of yes. influence over them. A good example mm -hmm. is customers. Are there some things that the business can do to influence their customers? Yes. For example, yes. when you give them what? Offers, when you give them, uh, maybe there is a promotion, discount, when you lower the prices. Yeah, there are some things that you can yes. do to influence your customers. Yes. So, I think okay. are those factors that business can have some level of influence over them. Oh. But when it comes to the remote factors, the business have no influence. Over them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, another person. Excuse me, sir. Go ahead. I was asking you to describe marketing intermediaries oh. and how they affect a business, whether internally or externally. You're talking about marketing. You see, marketing intermediaries. Somebody need to unmute mute himself. Okay. Uh, when we talk of marketing intermediaries, we are talking about suppliers. I want to think if you are operating a business, what are some of those things that you can do to influence your suppliers? Either when you pay them on time. You will influence them to continue supplying. Uh, maybe the other way can be what? When, what? What can you do to your suppliers to influence them, apart from paying them on time? And even when you place orders in good time. So there's a way you can influence them. Those are the marketing channels. Another person to raise up his hand. Any other question? We still have 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Elvis, Larry Boy. Elvis, Larry Boy. Say something. Elvis. Say something. I'm a Upapo. Stephen Moravi. Stephen. Stephen Moravi, are you there? For one time. Uh, who else has a, has a question? The answer is up your hand. I can see Charles Moses. Go ahead, Charles Moses. 
Okay, I wanted to ask you. Uh, you can go ahead. Under the characteristics of human wants. Yes. Is insatiable the same as endless? Okay, a very good question. When you talk of human wants are insatiable, it simply means the way you have, you have stated, they are endless. It depends, there are sometimes when you find in the books, some books talk of insatiable, others you talk about endless. They, they, they mean the same. They mean the same. Thank you. Okay. Uh, then we have JW. You can raise up your hand, JW. Joseph Wamala. Is insatiable the is insatiable the same? Is insatiable the same as unsatisfiable? I think the same as what? Satisfiable. Joseph Wamala, come again. Come again. What do we put there? Don't unmute yourself. You are unmuting yourself, Joseph Omar. Then you can go to pa Patrick Kerry. Patrick Kerry. Omar Abado. Patrick Kerry. Why is that on Zoom? Yes. A question. A question like explain yes. five benefits that explain five benefits that a business organization may get from engaging in social responsibility activities. What will you what will you answer? Okay, that is a good question. If I've gotten your question your question correctly, some of the benefits that a business can get because of engaging in social responsibility. Let us take yes. an example of equity, equity bank, for example. There is this program that we call Wings to Fly. It is uh, where the equity bank uh, normally sponsors students within the community who happen to come from less fortunate background. Assuming that that bank has done to a number of students, where well, Jason, Kemani, Unapotea, Okay, okay, thank you, you have come back. So the three to one, thank you for being obedient. Uh, we come back to the, the example of equity. When they provide that service to the community, one, there is that uh, loyalty by the side of the community where they, we find them going to equity because it cares about people in the environment. We find them now opening bank accounts, borrowing loans from there. So that, that's loyalty among the people, the customers. Uh, maybe some of the answers I can give you later uh, on the same. Uh, let us give, maybe we have five minutes to go, to give other people a chance to ask the question. Uh, Karaoke Emmanuel. Emmanuel Karaoke. Emmanuel Kaliuki, are you there? Emmanuel Kaliuki. Yes, I am. Yes, ask a question. Uh, okay? Yes. Yeah, the one I wanted to ask has been answered. Well, Emmanuel, what I'm chasing. <laughs> Okay, another person. <laughs> another person. Steve Mulevi. I can see your back. Yeah? Steve Mulevi from one south. I'm on south Alaska. Yes, yeah, Steve Mulevi, just say something. Uh -huh. I don't have a question. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Another person. <laughs> Newton Yoro. Newton Yoro. Newton Yoro. Yes, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Yes. Yes. Newton Yoro, go ahead. I don't have a question. Thank you. Another person. It means that the lesson is good. You have to agree with me. That is the paper that you got that you could have scored everything. Dio, I'm happy for those who scored everything. Uh, we have three minutes to go. Another person. We have this person, Elvis Lerimoy. I don't know why you are holding your heart. Elvis Lerimoy. Oh, la. Kevin Karioki. Kevin. Kevin Karioki. Kevin Karioki. Say something. Kevin, call me the fish at the actor. No, 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 no. I'm here. <laughs> Say something. Okay, thank you. I can see Kelvin Kama. Kelvin Kama. Kehama. Yeah, Kelvin Kehama. 23060. Kelvin Kehama, just go ahead and mute yourself. Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. What about Linus Kameu? Linus. You are so serious. Where are Linus? Linus, can you unmute yourself? Linus, and Andrews. Okay. Yeah, when we, like, when we talk about <laughs> pollution, yes, when we talk about pollution, can we, when we talk about Linus. pollution, can we bury the plastics? Can we bury the plastic? Can we bury them? You are correct. It is, uh, provided you have a, a, a better way to dispose them. Actually, the best yes. way is to bury them. If, they, if you cannot recycle them, the best way is to bury them. But I think plastic can be recycled. Recycling would be the proper way to dispose them. Thank you for that. You Thank you. Jill, are you there, Eugene? Eugene, twenty-three, four, fifty-five. I'm a Mosawa admission. But are you aware your admission will change? Are you aware of that? Yes. Oh, Eugene, you are. Uh, Eugene was sleeping. We want to see you on camera. To see whether you are sleeping. Sure, I'm not. You must be sleeping. Why are you putting off your camera? Okay. Uh, Stop shaving your hair. Milton, Milton. Milton, 23174. Uh, say something. I come basketball. Milton, what do you mean? Go ahead, Milton. Hi, Milton. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, teacher. Yeah, I said something. The question has uh, the question has answered. <laughs> yeah, <it's not> <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Ewe, wewe, 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 tunakuona. Then, Yuri. Yuri, address the word of prayer. Yuri. End the session with the word of prayer. Yuri. We are listening. We have, actually, we have even closed our eyes, waiting for you. Yuri. He does that with the, the closing prayer. Yes. Let's close our eyes and pray. Thank you, Lord, for leading us all this way, for letting us be alive this this day. Thank you for letting us our lesson be well and we have at least earned something. And oh Lord, please protect us by your blood. In the name of Jesus, I pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you for the last one. Amen. Bye bye. Good day.